Hey everybody, in this video, we're going to look at my custom software for tracking satellites in orbit and remotely controlling my ICOM 7100 to account for the Doppler shift based on the position of the satellites. Coming up. So go back and watch some of my older videos and you'll see me with an antenna in one hand and my radio in the other hand, trying to aim the antenna at a satellite passing overhead and manually tune the frequency with my other hand to try to account for the Doppler shift based on the position and looking at my laptop screen at the same time to try to keep everything in sync. This is my first step towards automating a lot of that. So I've got the software now that will track the satellite I'm, I care about in orbit and it will automatically control the radio to adjust the radio's frequency for the Doppler shift of the satellite. Okay, let's look at the computer and check out the software. All right, so what we're looking at here is the software I wrote to track the HOPE-1 satellite. So this is the same satellite you saw in my other videos where I actually receive the signal from the satellite as it passes my location. So I wrote this software initially to track that same satellite, the HOPE-1 satellite. And I'll give you a bit of a, a view of what you're looking at here. So this is a web page talking back to a web service that I wrote. Um, my front end is pretty rough now just to show the concept. But what you can see in the upper right, this is the real-time data about the satellite's current position you can see everything is relative to us. The altitude and azimuth from this observer location, that's me here in Nova Scotia. The distance away and the relative speed of the satellite to us. So how quickly it's approaching, if this is a positive number, or uh, accelerating away if it's a negative number. I'm also showing, you can see here, the satellite frequency. So this top number is the frequency that the satellite is transmitting at. <clears throat> the RX frequency is the frequency that that signal appears to me, the observer. And that's due to the Doppler effect, the Doppler shift of the signal based on the speed of the satellite. You can see right now the satellite is coming towards me. So the receive frequency that I observe is higher than what the satellite sends. The transmit frequency is for the other direction. If I were to send a signal, the satellite would see that signal at a higher frequency because it's accelerating towards me. So in order to hit this satellite frequency, I need to send my signal at a little bit lower frequency. So as you can see, all these numbers are being computed on the fly down to the, the hertz. These blocks in blue down below, these are the satellite pass predictions. So each block is one pass of the satellite by my current observer location, where the peak elevation or, or any part of the satellite's elevation crosses zero, so it's just above the horizon. This first one here coming up is at 57 degrees, so it'll be coming fairly close to me. 13 degrees, and this one down here, you can see the peak elevation is zero. That means it's just kissing the horizon. So I really wouldn't be able to receive that where I am. Uh, generally, the, the, the pass has to be at a much higher elevation to get a good signal. But I just included it there so we can see all of that data. So what you're looking at on the map, this is the NASA Whirlwind, uh, Web Whirlwind project, which is very much like Google Earth. It gives you zoom and scroll capability to explore the map. I'm charting on this map. You can see this arc here. This is that first satellite pass. The red pin is me, the observer. And the yellow pin is the current location of the satellite. So you can see if I zoom out a little bit and rotate this, you can see I'm here on the ground. The satellite's up here and it's slowly approaching the start of my pass. 
So you'll see right now my altitude is negative, but it's slowly approaching the start of this path. And while it's on this path or pass, it's above the horizon for me, the observer. So what we'll do is we'll skip ahead and I'll show you what it looks like when this satellite starts to make its actual pass. All right, so we're getting close to the start of the pass here. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see we're just approaching the start of this line. And you can see my pass starts 7.14.24. So there we go, we just hit it. And I've set it up so that once it actually starts the pass, it draws this direct line from the satellite's position to the observer location here. And that line is the distance shown here, this number here. And you can see the satellite is still approaching. This is a positive speed, but the actual absolute value is starting to decrease. So what you'll see is here it's approaching quite quickly, but as it gets closer to me, passing over here at maximum altitude, the speed is actually going to continue to slow, 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 until it's right at zero. And then just as it crosses that peak elevation, it's going to start accelerating away, and you'll see the speed drop to negative. You can also see on the screen now the ICOM 7100. So this is connected by USB to my computer. And this receive frequency is being automatically sent to the radio over that USB radio control interface so that my radio is tracking the Doppler adjusted frequency of the satellite in real time as it passes. Okay, I've zoomed in on my location here in Nova Scotia. We're going to see the satellite as it goes through the closest point on its pass. If you're enjoying this stuff, click the subscribe button down below, hit that bell so you get notified of new videos. It really helps me, helps the channel grow, helps me make great content like this. You can see the satellite, again following its path, is getting a lot closer to my observer location here. A few things are going to happen all at once. The altitude is approaching the peak elevation that my past prediction shows down here. My distance is approaching its minimum. The relative speed, you can see dropping rapidly, is going to approach zero right at the point when the velocity is orthogonal to the signal coming this way. The receive frequency, which is adjusting my radio automatically, is starting to approach the actual satellite frequency. Again, once the relative speed is zero, it's going to be the same receive frequency as satellite frequency. So you'll see the speed it'll rapidly approach zero and then drop into negative numbers as it starts moving away. So here we go. The distance once it approaches will know the is the minimum distance for this altitude. Okay, so here we go. You can see the relative speed dropping quite quickly. This line is just about orthogonal to my observer position. And you can see here my time is starting to approach my peak pass time here, just 15 seconds away from my predicted peak time. So here's the relative speed dropping down to zero the frequency coming into the exact target frequency, and then it'll all switch and start going the other way. Here we go, there. So it's now past its closest point. My altitude is decreasing now as it starts to drift further away. The distance is starting to increase again. It already reached its closest point. My relative speed is now negative, indicating that it's accelerating away or traveling away from me. And you'll see the re receive frequency is now lower than the satellite's frequency. 
So I hope you're having as much fun with this as I am. Uh, if you are, subscribe down below. I'm doing lots of videos in this series. Like I said, all steps towards actually being able to receive real signals from Starlink satellites. So subscribe below, follow my latest videos. Thanks for tuning in today. See you next time.